Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty and fashion trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Colleen, and let's just get into these beauty tips. So around the time that I am recording this, it is the holiday season, and most people are invited to parties, and some people aren't, and that's that's okay, I'm not. But the big party that most people are invited to are work parties. And these are the ones that are a little more difficult to get ready for. I want to share with you guys some tips and tricks to dress appropriately for these things. Not just with your clothing, but also with your makeup and a little bit with your hair. Now, when it comes to these work parties, it's a little hard to figure out what to do makeup-wise. Because you don't want to go completely overboard when it comes to this. You want to stay really light and natural because you want to still look like you, but a little amped up for these parties. Now, the first thing that I would say is go with a light base. A light natural base. Don't cake on that full coverage makeup. Go light and natural. And if it is a holiday work party, then it's probably going to be a little on the colder side. So when you're you know, doing your base, you don't want something that's going to look really dry on your skin because it is the drier time of the year. So I have super, like, mega Sahara, Sahara, Sahara dry (laughs) desert-like skin. And if I'm going to go and wear something, or if you have dry skin just like I do, definitely go for a very mm, hydrating foundation. Hydrating foundation, which is going to be better for your skin type and also last better throughout the day. Now, if if you are oily skin and you still want to, you know, stay locked in but give a little dewy effect, definitely go still with a matte foundation, but use highlighter to kind of give that effect of the dewy skin. You can, there are foundations out there that are dewy for oily skins and those can be really helpful if you're kind of going for this dewy holiday time hydrated look but if you are if you can't get one of those you just want to use your regular foundation that's fine just go with a little maybe a little more highlighter than you would usually use if you do or don't but don't go (laughs) with highlighter that is just glitter central. You're going to look ridiculous and it might look beautiful in photos, but when you see it on in person, it's going to look real chunky and almost leave a streak on your face, like on the high points of your face. So definitely stick with a more wet looking highlighter. And if you do have something like that, less is more, but that'll help you you if you have dry skin or if you have oily skin, excuse me, to give you more of that dewy effect. Now, once you've got your base all done and you're feeling good, then we're going to move on to the eyes. Now, this is a work party. This is not a friend's party, show off my makeup skills party. This is a I'm going and my boss is also going party. So, What you should do is go light on the eyes. Warm tones are good for winter. They look really nice and almost fall-like. They're really nice. But don't 
overdo it with the smoky eye. Don't do a smoky eye. Stick light and natural, maybe a little brown in your crease. And if you really want a little sparkle on that eye, maybe just use a little of that same highlighter that you put on the high points of your face and put that on your eye as well, along with a little matte brown in the crease. And I think that'll be just enough. If you're a winged eyeliner person and that's the kind of thing that you do often, then you can bring that wing into this look to kind of accentuate it. Sometimes it does help give a little extra boost to your naturalish eye makeup, which can be nice for the holiday seasons or just any party without being too much. But don't do the over big wing. Do just a little wing. You don't need a huge wing. If you keep messing it up and it just gets huge, then maybe just stick with just the eyeshadow on your eye. Maybe that's going to be the best way to go here. Now that you got your eyes done and your base is all good, let's move on to lips. Now, you're going to be at a party with coworkers and all this stuff, and it's going to be great, but go with something that's going to have staying power. A liquid lipstick is going to be probably your best bet. Now, if you don't have a liquid lipstick, something, a little tip that'll help is you can put on your regular lipstick, take a piece of tissue paper, put that over your lips, and then powder that. Once you take it off, it'll it'll give you a little bit more of a matte effect, but it also will help the longevity. This is very drying for your lips, and so is liquid lipstick in general. So I think the best thing to do before is definitely moisturize your lips, use some lip balm or a lip mask, and also to exfoliate your lips, especially if you're wearing a liquid lipstick, because if you don't exfoliate your lips, sometimes it'll cling to those dry, cracked patches on your lips and it'll look a little gross. Now, two lipsticks... Two brands of lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, that I do recommend in two different price points are NYX lipsticks, NYX. They have uh, different liquid lipsticks, and they're all great. They are affordable. They are at the drugstore. You can get them at Target. And they're a great brand, and they look great, and they have every color imaginable. And I definitely, definitely recommend them. But if you're looking for something a little bit more on the high end side, I would go with the Jeffree Star Velour liquid lipsticks. Now, those liquid lipsticks are probably one of the ones that is, like, I wouldn't say it's the most hydrating, but they're, they don't really bunch up or stick to those dry patches as much, and their longevity is insane. They last so long, and they also come in a crazy variety of colors. Now let's talk about color. Holiday season or not, if you're going with a light eye, you can definitely make a statement with going with a bold lip. I would probably push you away from going with a glitter lip at a work party because that seems, <laughs> it seems a little much for a work party. And it could be kind of gross. And if you're going to eat food and stuff, the glitter will get everywhere. And <laughs> then you're just going to be covered in glitter. <laughs> but go with a bold lip. A red lip is great. A red lip can be fantastic. It, and I mean, it looks great on everybody. If you don't think a red looks good on you, you are wrong. Go put a red on and look in the mirror because you are fabulous. <laughs> and I definitely think that a red is a good go-to if you're balancing out a neutral eye. But you can also go with dark cranberry colors, just berries in general. Browns are nice. You could really kind of push the envelope with your lip instead of doing it with your eye or anywhere else on your face. And this will really kind of give you that extra oomph that you're looking for without being too much at a work party. So when it comes to picking a color, definitely pick whatever you think is going to work best. Do your research and also just practice. Do a kind of look that you want to do for your holiday party days in advance. Just kind of see what lipstick might work better, if you like a wing, if you don't like a wing, that kind of thing. Definitely just kind of practice on your own when you've got a little bit of time and decide what you think is going to look best because it is up to you, personal preference, but also you don't want to kind of just do something and then show up and then you're looking back at that holiday Christmas photo on your office wall and you're like, man, I should not have done that. But definitely, you know, 
practice, play, have a good time trying to figure this out. But remember, less is more in makeup sense. You, If you really want to make a fashion statement, go with making your clothes more of a fashion statement than anything else. Or your shoes or your hair, but keep the makeup a little bit on the lighter side, but you can make a statement with a bold lip. I just wouldn't recommend a black lip. (laughs) But I mean, if you want to rock a black lip, then just, I guess, go for it. But I definitely think that, you know, play, try, look up some photos of your favorite celebrities who are wearing their holiday looks, and maybe it'll inspire you. I don't know, scroll through Instagram, do that kind of thing. Just Look around and see what you think is going to be the best for you, but definitely try and keep it a little lighter because you want to look more sophisticated at these parties. A little more, like I said earlier, you, but elevated. Now, I think it's time to take a a little bit of a break, but after the break, I'll be back and we'll talk about some hairstyles that could help elevate that look. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast. Now, before the break, we were talking about tips to help you figure out what kind of makeup look you want to do for an office party, whether it be holiday or a regular, just an office party, what's appropriate to wear makeup-wise. And we were talking about going light. Now, that kind of thing also applies when it comes to doing your hair for an office party. You want it to look nice and neat, but not over the top. This is not the time to go and try a crazy new updo with a braid and a what in a crimp in the side and that kind of thing. No. This is the type of party where less is more. Less is more because you want to look sophisticated. So, I definitely think that like the number one thing that you can do is a ponytail. A slicked back ponytail is really popular now. I mean, all celebrities do it. JLo's been doing it. Ariana Grande does it like every single day, you know, but that's, it's kind of a very nice and neat looking hairstyle. It's enough to look neat and nice without looking over the top, and you also look professional while you wear it. Now, if you're kind of like me, and hairstyles are a little tricky for you, and a slick back ponytail is a little too much, and also, I got a big forehead, and (laughs) a slick back ponytail does not look good on me then maybe just go with a basic ponytail, just a basic easy ponytail. To up that factor a little bit, you could curl the ends. If you leave two pieces out around your face to frame your face, you could curl the ends of those too and make it kind of a nice, cute, semi-curly ponytail without being all of your hair curled. Also, a straight ponytail works pretty well when it comes to something that's really nice and neat looking. You can straighten all of your hair or straighten it while it's in a ponytail and make it really nice and very chic, very runway model. Now, when I was looking at different styles of hair that you could do for parties, most of the things that showed up were celebrities. So definitely go look at your favorite celebrities and be like, oh, hey, what did they wear to a Christmas party? What did, you know, that kind of thing. Because most of the time they are dressed and updued to impress. (laughs) And so they kind of, and they're up with the trends. I mean, at least the the hair people that do their hair, because most of them don't do their hair. Secret. I mean, (laughs) 
you know, they're up with the trends and the things that are in style. And so those are the kind of things to keep an eye on when you're thinking about doing something. But also just keep it natural. Hair down is always nice. Just keeping your hair down. Waves are really in right now. So old Hollywood glam, like the nice little soft waves, those are very in right now. And also they look great. They always look great. And if you're doing something that that requires curls or whatnot and you don't want flyaways, definitely bring hairspray with you. Obviously, don't take it to the middle of everywhere and start spraying your hair, but (laughs) definitely take some hairspray with you or some sort of product that'll help you keep your hair nice, sleek, and shiny without making it look like it's kind of losing its luster throughout the night and falling out of every which way. (laughs) Because then you're going to kind of look like you're becoming a mess. And that is definitely what you do not want at a work function. Now, the big thing right now for holiday hair that is also very, I guess, professional looking, very sophisticated looking, are sparkly clips. This is something that could up your, your outfit for this party without being too much. And just giving you a little extra sparkle is to get some very nice flat clips and clip them to the side. Or if you have some cute little chopsticks and you do your hair up, do it like that. I wouldn't go for a sparkly um, elastic, hair elastic, but I would definitely go for some sparkly pins or whatnot. But don't overdo it with those. Don't do like 10 sparkly pins in the side of your head. It's going to look a little ridiculous if you've got like a million. You're like, hey, look, I'm the disco ball. (laughs) But I definitely think that, that using a little bit of clips or whatnot to kind of up the hair factor without being too much is a, is a great little tip to add to your look. Now, sparkly clips are good. Don't go overboard, like I said. But also, just keep it you. Don't make it, like... Don't try really hard to do something that's gonna either fall out or you really gotta kind of maintain or it took you, like, two hours to do. Don't do that. Be you. You're at a function for work where you're this work persona, I guess, all the time. And when you're coming to a party like this, you don't want to stray from that. You don't want to stray from being you and being this crazy, just kidding, I'm a glamazon kind of thing. You want to keep it subdued and keep it professional and keep it you. You don't want to go overboard. Now, ponytails, updos are great. Half updos are pretty good too when it comes to that. Just a little half up, half down. That's another thing where you could put a little clip in there or whatnot. Um, I probably would stray from like braids or this or that. Just keep it casual. You want to keep it professional but casual. And just kind of make sure that whatever you're doing is going to look good throughout the night. You don't really want it to, you know, start to fall apart throughout the night. You want to still look sophisticated, just as sophisticated when you got there as you do when you leave. Even if you've had a few drinks, you still want to look great because you want to make that good impression on your coworkers as well as your boss and whatnot, but you still have a good time. I mean, come on. Like, it's a party. It's still a party, and you're still allowed to have a good time. Just reel it back. You're not out with your friends. You're not doing crazy space buns or what have you. You're you're at a work function. I mean, that's pretty much... <laughs> that's pretty much it when it comes to this, is just remember that this is not the same as your friend's house party or your, you know whatever it is party. This is a work function and then that's just what you got to remember about that. Now I think it's time for a little bit of a break and when I come back we're going to talk fashion. What to wear. The best do's and don'ts of what to wear to a work function. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. 
From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Back to the GSMC Beauty Tips podcast. Right before the break, we were talking about, well, we've been talking about work parties this entire time, but we were talking specifically about hair tips and things you could do to kind of make your hair look nice and still sophisticated for work parties. Now I want to talk about outfits, but let's think about this when it comes to work parties is there's two different types of work parties. There's after hour work parties where you're going to a different location or maybe back to the office, but after hours for a party. But there's also during work hours parties. Now during work hours parties, you really want to go for what's appropriate attire. You don't really want to push the boundaries as much as you can when you're going to a party that is an after-hours work party. Now, a during-hours work party appropriate is really key. Like I said, you really don't want to push those boundaries. So you're going to be a little more restricted, and it's going to be a little bit... A little harder to, like, if it's a holiday party, to express the holiday spirit or really kind of amp things up. But it would go without saying that the makeup should be the same as what I talked about in earlier on in this podcast. Now, don't be afraid to dress up a bit, though. You can still dress up a little bit without being too much if it's during work hours. Just a little bit here and there to dress up and still make yourself look sophisticated, but still be appropriate with work is nice. Like a nice dress and nice shoes, maybe even to spice it up a bit, a fun blazer with a little bit of sparkle or something, maybe a little fun earrings, that kind of thing to really sort of amp up your look while still being a work-appropriate look. Like a nice dress, maybe something a little nicer than you usually wear to work. So I would don't go anything shorter than you would usually wear, definitely, when it comes to dresses or what have you. Um, stick with the normal length. Black is always a good color. It's slimming. It's easy to find when it, when it comes to stuff like this. It's real easy to find. And shoes. You could wear almost any shoe color with a black dress. You could really use your shoe to amp up as well. You could wear a very muted toned dress with a bright pop of color for the shoes. That would be so much fun. So if you're going for a holiday-esque look, let's say, let's say you wear a black dress, you could wear a bright red shoe and that would be really cute. Or even if you wanted to take it a step further, you could wear a green shoe. Um, if you're a little crazy, you could wear one green and one red. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. (laughs) That's probably a little too far. But fun earrings could be fun too. Like I said before, with your makeup, definitely amp up that lip. Definitely wear a a red. I'm gonna just like be an advocate for red lipstick here. But you can do these little things to amp it up. If you're a man, when it comes to this, fun socks. Fun socks could be so good to this. And you could also do a thing with a fun pop of color on your shoe. And, you know, a nice dress shirt, that kind of thing. Definitely when it comes to this, is you still want to stay work appropriate. I mean, 
If you have uniforms, then maybe just keep in the uniform, wear a cute, funny earring or something. You know, I just don't go overboard. The clips in your hair would also work for this without going a little too much. When it comes to indoor, indoor, <laughs> during work hours, uh, parties, it's just basically what you normally wear, but maybe with a tiny twist. Don't go what you normally wear, but elevated, like you would go if it was a um, outside-of-work party. Definitely just a little amped up, with a little pop of something, a little pop of color. Maybe you could wear cute nail polish with your with your outfit, your maybe your black dress, maybe a nice little red necklace, some red and green, or just red nail polish, and you could wear a shoe that matches too, and that way it's all kind of brought together without being a little too much. I think that would be really cute if you just kind of used little accent pieces, or if you have a little purse or something, to add the pop of color in your accessories instead of necessarily in your outfit or your makeup or your hair. Just your accessories to kind of amp up that... I guess just give it that extra oomph, <laughs> the oomph that it needs without being too much oomph, if that makes sense to you. <laughs> now, I really want to stress that when it comes to during work hours parties, you don't have to be just in the same thing that you wear all day. I do want to stress that you can bring out a little bit of fun and a little bit of extraness, if, if that's a if extraness, if that's a thing, um, by just adding little things here and there to your wardrobe. Maybe I've seen these cute little bow clips that look like little present bows. Maybe you could wear one of those in your hair. Just one, not five, just one. But that kind of thing is really going to help amp up your look. Now, I do want to talk about outside of work wardrobe tips after this, but I did want to put this in here because I think it is really important to kind of gauge what type of party you're going to when it comes to work. If it is an, you know, during work hours party or if it's an after hours party because they are different and dressing up for those two things are not the same. Because, you know, you're working during one and you're not during the other. You still want to be appropriate to work without being like, ooh, she's she's looking a lot today or or something like that, you know? You, you still just want to be appropriate without being way too fancy sophisticated, I guess. I just think that it's important to bring that in here since it is, you know, it is a thing that happens and there are a lot of places that do do out, you know, like out of work and during work hour parties. It's not one or the other. I mean, it might be both at some places, but, you know, that there is a difference in what you should wear and what you shouldn't wear when it comes to these things. You just don't have as much leeway when it comes to a during work hours party. Now, I'm going to take another quick break, but right after, I really want to talk about out of work party attire. This is where you can just play with it and have a lot of fun. you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do. All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest.
back to the GSMC Beauty Tips podcast. Now, before the break, we were talking about outfits and what's appropriate to wear during a during work hours party. Now, I really want to talk about what you can wear to an not during work hour party, an outside of work party, if you will. <laughs> because there is so much more that you can do with these parties than you can do when your party is during work hours. Now I have a few tips that are definitely something you need to be wary of when it comes to what you're picking to wear. Now the first one is to beware, like beware of low cut necklines. Now low cut necklines are on a lot of things, but really be wary of that because sometimes they are a little bit lower than you know, you might think they are, or on top of that, they are a little more inappropriate than you may normally think that they are. And if, if you're wearing, you know, like a lot of higher up neck line, lines, upper neck, (laughs) a lot of outfits or shirts or whatever that you're wearing on the top that's got a little bit of a higher neckline actually look really pretty. But if you feel like it's kind of bland and the neckline's a little weird, then adding a necklace will really help with that. Now, I wear a lot of higher uh, <laughs> higher collared necklines because I do have an entire chest tattoo. And if I'm going to something that's a little like a work function or something that's a little um, more sophisticated than an average party, then I'm going to go for something with a higher neckline because you know, I, it's, it's distracting. There's, you know, my entire chest from shoulder to shoulder is a tattoo. So, you know, it can be a little distracting, but if I'm going to a party that's not a work function or something that's sophisticated, I'll wear something a little more low cut and just make it part of my outfit, but that's not going to work here. Definitely go with something with a little higher of a neckline, you know, and if you're feeling constricted or whatnot, you can go with a sort of low, but just beware of how low your neckline goes. How low can it go? Uh, not that low because this is a work party, like for real. So the second tip that I want you to consider is where your hemline hits. Now, use caution to not go too short. So if you're wearing a dress, two inches above the knee is probably as short as you want to go. I mean, you could probably go a little shorter, um, but be wary because If you're sitting down in a dress like this and it is a little too short, you might show off some stuff that you would rather not show off to coworkers or bosses. Just kind of be wary of where your hemline sits. I know that a lot of things are pretty short nowadays, but if you are going to wear something that's a little too short, maybe wear shorts underneath. But I would just suggest going with the two inches above the knee is probably pretty good. And I mean, that does also depend on your body type because sometimes things that are short on some people are actually longer on others. Because I, I'm very short. I'm like five foot tall. So <laughs> I could probably wear something shorter than my sister. Because my little sister, I know, little sister, she's like, oh, what, like five, seven, five six, seven. So she's a lot taller than I am and she can't wear some of the same stuff that I can wear because it's too short on her because she's taller. But also when it comes to that, if you're taller, you could wear a maxi dress and they look so good. I can't wear a maxi dress because it drags on the floor. But if you're taller, that's also a really good option for this is a maxi dress because also you can dress those up to be so sophisticated and beautiful. Even like the pantsuits, pantsuits are cool. But definitely go with, like, something that's not going to be too short. Keep in mind where your hemline is. It is pretty important when it comes to this. Also, the next one is kind of something you should really think about when it comes to almost any sort of party, is how sheer your fabric is. Check the sheerness of your fabric. Because you don't know what kind of lights are going to be at these parties. So if you're going to Christmas parties, things might be like super festive and this and that. But you really need to be careful with how sheer your fabric is because some of these lights can make your fabric more sheer. So if you're trying on dresses at home or 
whatever it is that you plan to wear at home, a shirt, nice slacks or whatever, make sure that there's not that sheer or if there's a little bit of sheer, maybe wear something underneath that complements and just be careful because this is a thing that happens and I've seen it happen before and it's kind of, it's embarrassing to some people because they, they look gorgeous, don't get me wrong. But then they walk into this room and the lights are hitting them all crazy and the light's way different and you can see their underwear. And, I mean, if you see someone's underwear and it doesn't seem that they're aware, maybe tell them. Like, don't be the person who just kind of looks and is like, man, her, her underwear is out. Like, like, don't do that. Tell somebody. Let them know. Help them out. Give them a sweater. I don't know. Like, for real though, check your fabrics. <laughs> check your fabrics because things can be a lot more sheer than you think they are. If you're not too sure, something seems a little sheer, but you're not sure, hold it up to different lights like daylight or to a light you have on the ceiling and kind of check your sheerness that way. Also, once you put on an outfit, if you have a significant other or a roommate or a friend or whatever, ask them what they think and be like, hey, is this a little too sheer? Like, can you see anything under this? Because that can, you know... Maybe they can see something that you're not seeing because it's on your body. So definitely do that. Definitely be wary of sheer. I basically steer clear of anything sheer because it just, for me, is no for me. No for me. <laughs> I just, I, I can never figure out what to layer under it. And a lot of times things aren't meant to layer and you're just like, well, then how am I supposed to wear this? It's a, it's a work party. Don't free the nip at a work party, for real. Just tone it back. You want to look sophisticated, and you don't want your coworkers and your bosses to see your underwear. Now, for the last thing I have, I have a few tips for men, for our men listeners out there. Now, dress shirts. Dress shirts are basically, you know, the best bet when it comes to these kind of things. You guys have it a little easier than we do. Just saying. But... Dress shirts are great, and the one thing that will really help elevate it is make sure your dress shirt is ironed. It'll make you look so much more put together if your dress shirt has, like, zero wrinkles in it. You will seriously up your game just with that. That can help so much. And like I mentioned before the break, a good thing to do for men if they really want to spice up that, you know, look with a little bit, I don't know, if it's a holiday party, if, if you want to spice it up with a little holiday cheer, and you can see your socks, wear some cute socks. Wear green socks, or red socks, or little socks with Santas, or something like that on it. Hanukkah socks, blue socks, those are cute. Like, I mean anything. Just kind of use, you can use that to spruce up your outfit without accessories. Your socks are your accessories. You can also do that with your shoes. And when it comes to socks in general, pick appropriate socks. So if you're wearing like black slacks and, you know, black dress shirt or something, don't wear white socks. You know, don't, don't do that. Just, just amp it up with some cute socks or just some nice sleek socks that match the rest of your outfit. Or if your socks don't show, you can add some fun shoes to that to kind of amp up that look with some shoes or even some suspenders. Some cute little suspenders would be nice. But just be wary that sometimes if you're going to wear suspenders, you'll kind of look... Some people can look a little childish. Definitely stick with those kind of things if you want to add a little bit of accent in or pop of color or funness into your outfit. Now, the last tip I have for men is clean shaven. You don't have to, like, if you're a guy and you just have facial hair and that's kind of your look and you like it, just make sure it's nice and trimmed. Make sure you're nice and trimmed up. Or if, you know, you got some stubble going on, just just shave it off. It'll really help, it, like, elevate that look. If you look nice and clean shaven, it'll match. And if you match that with a nice, you know, styled hair, it'll look so much more put together once you've got everything on. Trust me, this can help a lot when it comes to that. Just a little bit of extra effort into your outfit with a clean-shaven face. Kind of like how we're going to put on makeup for this um, party. Just a little clean-shaven face. And if you, you know what, if you're a guy out there and you do have a little bit of zits and you're kind of, I don't know, self self-conscious about it, 
put on a little makeup. I mean, put on a little makeup. Celebrities wear makeup. K-pop stars, they wear a lot of makeup. And they're all men. Nobody's judging. It's 2019. I mean, come on, almost 2020. But I really think that it's imperative to tie everything together and look as clean cut as you can by just taking care of your shirts. Ironing your shirts, you know, picking socks that don't look like your gym socks underneath a nice suit, or... And on top of that, just kind of taking care of yourself with a clean shaven face or a nice trimmed beard or what have you. Don't add glitter in your beard. It's weird. I mean, if that's the party that you're going to, then do it. But I mean, (laughs) it's a little weird. All right. I'm going to take a little break again. And when we come back, we'll talk about some more tips for your work holiday parties or work parties in general. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. back to the GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast. Before the break, we were talking about tips for your outfits for your outside of work hours work parties. Not just your holiday work parties, but your work parties, outside of work parties. (laughs) So, I want to talk about some do's and don'ts when it comes to work parties in general. So not just do's and don'ts for your outfit or your hair or not, just do's and don'ts for work parties in general. Let's start about the first one, which actually pertains to what we were talking about. Do ask around about the dress code. So ask your your work co-workers, your work friends, maybe even your boss if you feel that comfortable with that, um, what the dress code is or what they're wearing is kind of a good way to, to bring it up. Like, hey, what are you going to wear to the party this Saturday or, <laughs> or whatever? You can obviously tell it's been a while since I've been to an office party, but... On, on the real though, this is really a helpful tip because if you're not really sure what to wear, ask somebody else what they're going to wear and it can kind of help you figure out what's going to be appropriate for you to wear. And maybe ask more than one person because maybe one person's going to go a little more than the other person. You can kind of gauge where you could fit in with your outfit at this party. So don't be afraid to ask around. I mean, if you're new, it's still a good thing, and it also will help you kind of meet people and be able to find somebody that you recognize at the party later on. Definitely ask around. Now, a don't is talk about business. Now, you can always talk a little bit about business when you're at these parties, but it's probably not a good idea to just excessively talk about work at an outside of office hours work party. Really don't talk about it. Bring up other things. That'll bring us to our another do, which is mingle with new people. These kind of things are to, you know, up morale and, you know, show the the employees and whatnot that the company does care about them. And so 
you're meeting people that are probably not in the same department as you, or maybe you didn't even know worked there. And this can really help to make friendships or kind of make it a little more easy when you're working and get to know people and really make that inner circle that you might not have had before. And if you're new, this can really help you to reach out. And when it comes to this, don't talk about work. Mingle with new people and talk about yourself or interests or whatnot or how great the party's going, how good the food is, that kind of thing. Those things are important when it comes to these sort of things because they can really help you in the long run with your work. Let's talk about another do. Do know who is invited. Now, this might sound kind of weird, like when you say it like that, but the whole reason to know who's invited is because you might not be allowed to bring your spouse or boyfriend or a date. Now, this is something that you can also ask around about, or you can just ask a boss about or somebody who's coordinating the party, because this is important information to know, because you don't want to bring your spouse or your boyfriend or a date or something, and they're the only one there that is not somebody who works there, that is not an employee. So it is really crucial to think about that as well as, you know, who's invited just in case you want to know who's going. <laughs> like, you, you, you really should ask because if you just bring somebody, they're going to be so uncomfortable and you want to think about them as well as, it might make you look a little weird if you're the only one who brought a date. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. On the dating aspect of this, one thing you shouldn't do at a work party is flirt. Now, I know it's work parties, people do it all the time, but that's probably not something you should do because you do have to see these people again because you work there. So it's probably better not to flirt with them, and that goes to another don't, which is drink excessively. Now these two can go hand in hand. Do not drink excessively, especially if your um, party has an open bar. Give yourself a limit at the beginning of the night. Give yourself some sort of limit that's going to be like, maybe I should just have two beers or two cocktails or whatnot because it, oh, you don't want to look like a fool. You don't want to make a fool of yourself in front of coworkers and bosses because even though most of them are like, oh, we'll just kind of forget this, they do remember those kind of things when you kind of make a little bit of a fool of yourself at a work party. So give yourself a limit. Really kind of tone it down. Give yourself a limit to how many drinks that you can have and stay with that. Don't go overboard. And then if you go overboard, you might start flirting with people. And then that makes the whole thing really uncomfortable for later on when you were flirting with Sandra, but now you've got to go to a meeting with Sandra. Like, that's going to be a little weird. Just saying. Let's talk about another do. Do call an Uber. If you are having drinks, Uber, a taxi service, or even see if they have a service, like a, if, if they have come, like, partnered, there we go, words I'm looking for, <laughs> if they had partnered with a service to be able to bring you home, maybe Uber there too if you do planning on having drinks, because you don't want to end up driving a little buzzed or drunk because then you get a DUI and then now you're not allowed back at your work again. Yeah, just, it's it's a safety matter just in general, people. It is just a regular safety matter that you should think about, is do not drink and drive. Like this, anywhere. Even any party, any party, anything, do not drink and drive. Make sure you have an alternative route home or a sober driver. Because this is, it's a big one. This is a big one. Because this could lose you that job that you're at this party for, or a lot of other things. And you could hurt somebody seriously. So definitely think of an alternative route or ask if there will be provided services to take you home. Please do that. Drunk driving is not okay. It is not. It is not. It is not. It is not. Now, let's talk about another do. Have fun. Do 
have fun. Yes, this is an office work party, and yes, these are a lot of do's and don'ts and this and that, and should I or should I not, but you really, you really should have fun. These things are made for you guys. These things are made for the employees. They're made to boost morale and show how much the company cares and, you know, really thank their employees for the jobs that they're doing, and you should have fun with it. Always have fun when you go to these things. You don't want to be the person who's, you know, in the corner kind of sipping their drink to themselves, being like, eh, and then leave in the first five minutes. Like, no. You want to have fun. Enjoy yourself. You're going out to have a good time. Mingle with new people. Meet new people. Have a good time. Talk to your work friends. Have a drink. Eat some food. You know, that kind of thing. Kind of connect with your boss outside of work. Maybe they're a different person. Maybe they're a little nicer. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But really have fun. That's a big, big thing when it comes to this. Is no matter what you're wearing, no matter what your hair looks like, or your makeup looks like, or what color your shoes or socks are, you're here to have a good time. You're here to be appreciated for the work that you do. Have a good time. Trust me, having a good time will result in you feeling better when you go to work next or, you know, kind of just, it'll make the whole thing more memorable in a good way. You don't want to have a bad, memorable holiday party. There's a movie about that, like a comedy movie about (laughs) holiday parties. I think it's called Holiday Office Party. And you do not want that. If you've ever seen that movie, that movie is absolutely ridiculous and hilarious, by the way. But if you've ever seen that movie, I definitely recommend that you don't take any of their advice and you don't do what they do. All right, we're going to take one more break and then we'll be back. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. back to the GSMC Beauty Tips podcast. Now, before this break, we were talking about um, do's and don'ts for work parties, like outside of work work parties. Just do's and don'ts in general for them, not so much having to do with what you're wearing or what your eyes look like, your hair or whatnot, just your basic do's and don'ts. Now, I thought it would be kind of funny if I shared some stories about um, some work parties I've been to. So, my dad used to own a... a, um, architecture company and he would throw the parties at our house so i've (laughs) i've been to a lot of work parties by him and i ended up working for him for a little bit so i was invited to one of those even though i i don't remember if i was living there at the time i don't think so but you know i've been through a lot of work parties at this point i've been to other work parties too but these ones are the ones i remember the most because they were at my house and just kind of funny in general So one of the don'ts was don't drink excessively. And I remember, so my dad had catered and he had this guy roasting an entire pig in our front lawn, which was so cool and delicious. But then they also had a um, bar service come in and make, you know, like drinks and it was an open bar and Everybody was having a great time and drinking probably way too much. (laughs) And this is one of those things where they invited not only 
employees, but also their spouses or significant others or whatnot. And um, one of his partners was, is who is no longer with us, his wife would come and have specific drinks every time she came. And she always drank a little too much. And, um, <laughs> which I remember the most, but I remember one year, everybody drank too much. I don't know what everyone was drinking. I was under the age at this point in my life. Like I was pretty young and, um, <laughs> everybody had way too much to drink, including my dad who ended up calling a service cause he would call like a taxi service or whatnot to take people home and they could just leave their cars at our house if they wanted to just to make sure everybody was safe getting home. And he called, he was so drunk. He called a limo service for everybody, like individual limos for everybody to go home in, which was a pretty penny. And he regretted later on, but <laughs> I mean, on the company dime, <laughs> he, Everybody's like stumbling out of our house, getting into these limos, these poor drivers. Like, <laughs> my dad's like, see you later. And then was definitely regretting it later on because, I mean, he paid for separate limo services for like two people and then another two people and <laughs> kind of ridiculous. We've had a lot of that. I also <laughs> remember one that was probably a little more recently, like, five or so years ago, um, I had a roommate who was a bartender. So my dad ended up hiring my roommate on as the bartender. And he made a lot of money that night. Don't get me wrong. But I got a lot of drinks out of that too. And that was fun. But that's, that's another one of those things is when you're hiring somebody you know, and they're just making all these crazy drinks and having a good time because they've got basically free liquor to do what they will with for people for free it just, it, it gets out of hand. It's, all, a lot of these stories I remember are just drink stories. But then there was one about a year or two ago, maybe, that I went to, I went to just to say hi to my parents. I mean, they invite me anyway, because they do it at their house. And, um, <laughs> I went up there to do it, and I ended up just helping, spending a good portion of my time just helping the catering company set everything up. Because they only sent, like, two people, and it was supposed to be this huge, like, get-together thing. And I was like, oh, I mean, come on. And I felt so bad for them, so I just helped them set everything up. And I think they were very grateful for that, because help your catering company. Sometimes they don't send enough people, like, for real. Um... <laughs> Besides that, let's, let me see. Do I get another story? I got one more. I got one more for you. <laughs> so I, I, um, I went to this office party, or I guess it was an office slash just Christmas party in general for, um, my dad's friend. And we went out there. Everybody's, you know, gonna have a good time. And he was mad at me the entire time. He didn't want me to take my sweater off because of my tattoos. And I was, I was kind of frustrated about it the whole night because, you know, that's kind of me at this point. My mom doesn't care. The rest of my family doesn't care. Like, he's the only one that for some reason cares about that. But I, um, so I'm, I took my sweater off anyway because it was just way too hot and ended up spending the night just talking to some other older men about like, oh, I've got this tattoo from here and I was in a biker gang here and this and that. And it was just so much fun and it was funny to see his reaction to that. But on top of that, it was a bunch of people in their like 50s and 60s playing like one of the Wii U dance games. <laughs> or it was the Wii dance game at this point, I guess, because this was a pretty long time ago. And it was just, oh, it was magical. It was probably one of the best things I've ever seen. If you want a good laugh, go find your grandparents or whatever and have them play a video game dance game with you because it is so much fun. It is just so much fun. <laughs> and there were drinks involved in that with adults and I was, I don't think I was over the age at that point. I might have been, I don't think so. But just watching people who were a lot older than me just get like hammered and then try to dance with the video game that they couldn't figure out was probably one of the best things I've ever seen. 
<laughs> All right. Those are my few Christmas, like, little, I guess, Christmas slash holiday party things that I wanted to share with you guys. I really want to thank you guys for sticking it out with me and listening and having a good time. Follow us on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are GSMC underscore beauty tips. Hit us up. We'd love to see your holiday looks. Give us your, send us your holiday looks. I'd love to see them. It would be so much fun. Or just even your just regular party looks. Party, work party looks. I want to see, I want to see all your party looks. I want to see you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you in the next one. I'm Colleen. And I'll see you later. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from health and wellness to entertainment and life and happiness to sex and relationships. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast.